everyone. Happy Mondays or the rest of the Monday because it's nearly eight o'clock now here in the UK or happy Easter Monday. Uh, or if you do like these jokes and things, so happy April Fool's Day as well. <laughs> if you're one of those people, so like post things on Facebook and say, you know, like I'm pregnant or something like that, or or you're you're not you're not so like um, putting any more vinyl or things. So, um, but yeah, it's happy April April Fool's Day today. So it's brand new month. I can't believe it's now. So like the second quarter of the year, it's now. April, uh, time flies. I mean, you know. But anyway, so um, it's one minute till eight in the UK in the evening. And this is unusual because um, I was away yesterday, Sunday. So um, yeah, that's why. And also, uh, my guest, uh, he's been to work today and he's really tired, but I'm really glad that he's here. Um, it's now three o'clock in the morning on the Tuesday in Manila. I hope some of you are still awake <laughs> and joining us. Um, and it's three in the afternoon in New York. So um, welcome to another episode of Ask the Drummer. Today's guest, I've got to say, I mean, he's, he's one of those uh, like uh, m uh, Manc drummer legends or a, a drummer legend in, in Manchester. But I found out actually that he's not born he is not he's lived in manchester for a long time but he wasn't born in manchester but still you know he's a he's a, he's a monk drummer legend so um yeah it's now so actually also uh i've got to say it's daylight saving time or british summer time here in the uk so um yeah clocks went forward last night or yesterday so anyways that's all <laughs> My dear friends, please welcome Richard Harrison. <laughs> Hello, Richard. Hi. Uh, How are you? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm all right. I, as I say, I've been working today. Yeah, um, really tired. Yeah, yeah. So, are I'm you allowed on, to say? Are you allowed to say what you do? Part. Pardon? Are you allowed to say what you do? What I was job? just saying. I, I work part time on a farm oh um right. yeah my, my brother has an organic farm and uh it, it was a farm where i grew up but uh i managed to escape doing music oh but i see i've kind of drifted back doing part-time work which uh yeah helps yeah. me helps me survive so is it like with vegetables or like his, his main thing is organic egg production and then he grows spuds and he grows some veg yeah yeah although uh, i'm i'm actually a vegan so but yeah i'm just so pleased that he's organic oh I see wow <laughs> I, I didn't know that but anyways last time i saw you um you were at work at king b and uh, i remember it was <laughs> it was raining heavily that uh that afternoon and i saw you it was like oh my god you know immediately because i like having photos with you know, with drummers and musicians and things i was all like thinking i wanted to have a photograph but i could see that you're like drenched you know, so like, <laughs> from the rain so i thought no i'll leave it but i did ask you about uh you know, um, guesting on Asta Drummer, and luckily, I'm I'm really glad that you said yes. You know, that you said yes to it. So, um, welcome to Ask the Drummer. Uh, episode 120 is all about you, Richard Harrison. Right, so, yeah. um, you just said that that's where you actually you grew up, or that's where you are from. Like you're in a in a farm. Somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. First band was in a chicken shed. <laughs> okay so is that somewhere you said um before we get um came on live that it's somewhere in chester or cheshire? North, Ch North cheshire not cheshire okay yeah yeah um are you from a, a musical family no oh, god no <laughs> <laughs> no not at all you're the only you're the only one no, i i had a granny who played piano but that, that was about it. <laughs> so, 
a very <laughs> so how long um how long did you sort of like live in the farm before you actually moved because you, you lived in manchester for a long time yeah I, I, yeah that would be sort of early 20s when i moved to manchester well, what was it like then living in the farm um well when i was living there it, well, i was working seven days a week and cool. and if, i'd be playing with a couple of bands and if, yeah and sort of keeping it trying to keep a relationship together it was like i think i used to sleep about three hours a night at that time oh my god and, <laughs> yeah something had to See? give and that seven day a week work had to give yeah but what about what about drumming though i mean how did you sort like get into it if you're working all those hours a day i mean Oh, good. How did you get to it? Well, work was just something you did before going to a rehearsal or going for having a jam. Um, yeah, music music was always important to me. Um, yeah. And I say I used to used to have a drum kit and a chicken shed on the farm. <laughs> have you always been so like drawn to the drums or did you try any other instrument as well like maybe guitar or um, um piano? i mean I, I did have an acoustic guitar before i got drums but I, as a kid i used to get sort of big oil drums and other chemical drums and sort of like bash away on them wow and did you um did you have like lessons drumming lessons or did you just sort of like no uh, not yet so you, know, <laughs> you are thinking of having <laughs> uh, i mean i think every time you see or listen to a drummer you're having a lesson of some sort um yeah yeah but you didn't have any you just saw it like played and yeah yeah yeah. Like, yeah yeah well you were, you mentioned about so like first band so was there any other with you is it just one man band or who, who was sort of like playing with you at the time um i mean i, I do is kind of lots of li little different combinations um so the first band that i gigged with was one called general bridgewater's underground railway um <laughs> it's a bit yeah. of mouthful, that, name. <laughs> yeah. that yeah it, it, that was not sort of pretty much a covers band really which um i didn't i didn't uh i didn't like that too much <laughs> oh <laughs> good experience but and it's good band name as well <laughs> yeah yeah and that was you're still so like uh you haven't moved to manchester by then I mean, no 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 that was that was out uh out in north cheshire yeah uh, and then uh we had a band called hut for about six years and that was kind of more influenced by sort of kraut rock and okay yeah yeah and that kind of thing yeah um, and then uh we formed a group called the mud hutters and that was, was they, yeah. that was that yeah. was the first record that we released well and, i was gonna say that that's the one you're with andy diagram so and andy wasn't in the mud hutters very early on he did he did oh. play in a later version oh i see and because um the first band that you mentioned that wasn't on discord so i didn't so, like get to hear about so i don't know if you managed to sort of like release something when you were in that band but the um, mud hutters that's that's actually on discord yeah and that's how um i got to know that andy diagram was sort of like uh, with you in that band yeah um and also the one thing that i've noticed is um most of the bands that you were in you and andy diagram were always so sort of like in that same band you're playing together so how did you how did you manage because i thought i've always thought that andy diagram was from manchester but he's not he's from london isn't he yeah I mean, he moved to in Manchester in 1980. 
and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I met him at the uh, Manchester Musicians Collective, and oh. he he joined Dislocation Dance and the Diagram Brothers at that time. Yeah, but you're uh, already a, you're already in Dislocation Dance. I was, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so is that your sort like uh, first? I don't want to say proper because I'm sure that those bands that you were in, you know, they enjoyed it as well. But this location dance of all the bands that I've sort of like seen um, on discogs, that's like the major one. Because I know that in the Philippines, um, this location dance is also <clears throat> so we've got fans in the Philippines who yeah. know sort of like this location dance. Because I remember we've got a radio station. And it's online now. It used to be so like you know, like proper radio station, but it's online radio station. Ian Runacre, so like does some kind of a like a station ID. Uh, right. You know? <laughs> it was so sort of like thinking, oh my god! So you know, there is like um, a fan base, a dislocation dance fan base in Manila, in the Philippines. Okay, I, I wonder if that uh, came out of those. Um... We did a, a a little tour in Japan in 1999, um, oh, wow. and the uh, Vinyl Japan they released yeah. they released a load of stuff, so maybe that would make it to uh, out to the Philippines. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! So with this location dance, uh, is that so? That's how you got to meet Andy Diagram. Yeah. And then you saw like, cause I mean, it's, it's fascinating that, uh, you know, you're always the two of you together. And it was like this friendship or this like collaboration um, is just really strong between you and, and Andy Diagram. So, cause there are other bands like uh, Smart Bombs. Yeah. And um, the, oh, sorry, <laughs> I can't even read that. So the Honkies. The Honkies. The honkies. Yeah. So, so can you tell us more about so like so which one which one was formed first and then and then the other band was sort of like formed after that? Okay. Um so when as dislocation dance was kind of coming to an end in eighty mid eighties, eighty six, um uh, we started the group called the Honkies. Actually no before that, um, we did a, a, a year or so playing with Nico, um, and then the Honkies came after that. Okay, this is Nico from Velvet Underground? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Did a few European tours with her. That was, oh, no. That was pretty mad. <laughs> 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 and the Honkies. Uh, they, uh, they were kind of like punk jazz. Um, yeah, it was a great band. And we, we wrote sort of everything was kind of bespoke written. So it was uh, a lot of a lot of energy went into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then when the Honkies split in the early 90s, uh, we formed the smart bombs coming out, people coming out of the honkies, and that lasted for a couple of years. And then we sort of, although we started doing the space heads in 1990, 89, 90, yeah. uh, we, we started to focus on the space heads in uh, um, 95 until the present day. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another thing that I find so like, because I thought. Um, space heads were like a recent thing because I didn't actually get to see space heads until 2016. Right. Um, that was the first time I saw you and Andy Diagram. But um, you were actually, you formed space heads in the early 90s. And then you said that, you know, in 1995, when it actually saw like, and I only, I also found out that you've, you've done like 13 albums already. That's something like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole lot. Yeah, we've also got a label putting out a, comp a triple vinyl compilation of early Spacehead stuff. Um, a label from San Francisco, um, Absolutely Kosher. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
and uh, that's coming out this year or soon yeah, or hopefully like? it, it was supposed to be out by now but these things get delayed yeah yeah <laughs> actually the mud hutters are we're quite possibly going to get a double album out soon as well as, as the back catalog oh wow uh, that's a, a label in new york who are interested in that yeah yeah so what's so like um mud hutters so more so like punk are they like or because because yeah. i find the space heads is sort of like a, a festival like a fiesta <laughs> it was all like a do you know what I mean when I saw you when I saw you in Manchester at that time? This is almost like you know, like a party music and okay, like festival music. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think we've we've kind of live. It, it depends where we're playing. If we feel like there's an audience going to get into it and dance, then we'll then we'll play more dancey things. Yeah. Oh, okay. If yeah. it's like. Yeah. A, chin stroking jazzier audience then we'll play differently all oh, right because yeah because i remember seeing you at um the pear hat yeah as well because you played at the pear hat not long after the uh, carlton club in manchester and yeah that was a different so like i would say set list or something it's a different kind of thought so, like um setting than the one at the carlton club so um yeah so um, oh, another thing that I've sort of like um, uh, disco well, discovered when I was sort of like Googling your name is it's like improvisers. You you like uh, doing collab collaborations with like improvisers or sort of like a band? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, are you talking about Spaceheads or me personally? Yeah, I think you sort of I, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm sort of very involved in the, the Manchester musicians who do improvisation um, yeah. do, you, do you know any of those people david birchall well there's there's one with graham massey as well graham oh, massey yeah, yeah. and paddy stair because okay. they're like they're as, like manchester as, legends as mentioned well. yeah tool shed and home life <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That was old. laughs> i actually saw um marks. pardon Stretch marks. I must, I must say, mention stretch marks. Stretch marks. Yeah. That's... Have you heard of Stockhausen and Walkman? Oh yes, that's that's another one that I was gonna so like ask yeah. you about. So yeah. stretch marks is kind of connected with Stockhausen and Walkman. Oh um, right. With Matt Matt Wand. Yeah. I'm I'm actually doing a gig on Friday in Sheffield with uh, Matt Wand. This coming Friday. Yeah um and that, that'd be an improvised music thing with a saxophone player um we're going to be called hard shirking men oh <laughs> okay so these are also like so i i think it's almost like uh, so you collaborate with musicians and then and then you maybe you find that you've got enough material to release it and then you call yourself like a different name and different bands but basically so like the same the same people the same musicians doing it or uh, different musicians? <laughs> like, we see what comes out <laughs> like, yeah. Anyways, I, I, I yeah. did a, i did a session with jeff lee he um he was in the original henry cow back in the 70s i did right. a session with him um two weeks ago um yeah i loved it yeah i'm sure we'll be playing live at some point oh okay and th these are mainly so like manchester musicians that you're collaborating with or yeah yeah i mean yeah. I, I i i used to spend a lot more time in london and play with people down there um yeah. improvisers but there was there was also there was a group called orchestra murphy that i did quite a lot of stuff with okay yeah uh, Is that, are they the ones because uh on discogs there's um a band from new york that you also oh god he's my co-pilot yeah 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 have you come across them 
Yeah, well, on Discogs, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I was, so I was like, how do you sort of like collaborate with them if you're in Manchester or do you go to New York and so like do um, some recording? I, mean, I, I kind of, I used to see them when we used to tour in America. Um, oh, okay, yeah. And yeah, yeah we would stay with them. And uh, sometimes we'd do the, be on the same bill. And then they, they asked me to do a tour in Portugal. And yeah, I mean, I've not done that much with them, but I would, I, I would love to do more. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> sorry, Aiden said that Sound and Vision, very good. Aiden is my uh, tech support. So, and he's also said that, wow, toured with Nico, that must have been an experience. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was fantastic to hear her do her solo spot. Such a powerful presence on stage. Yeah. Um, she, she lived in Manchester. She did, yeah. 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 yeah I, I, there was quite a few Manchester musicians that played with her over the, over the years. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, it was, it was great to do. Yeah, well, yeah, Aiden said that so because uh, Aiden is a big fan of the Velvet Underground, so yeah, that's that's really good. <laughs> um, Andy Diagram. So, in Space Heads, is there any sort like plan of going like maybe doing more gigs or because um, I know that he's really busy with James at the moment? Yeah, well, at the minute, while he's on tour with James, he's got the next Spaceheads album and EP in front of him and he's mixing them. Oh. Um, and uh, we're not we're not gonna do any gigs until November. Actually no. We have we do have a, a little festival gig in July. But otherwise okay. we're gonna do try and do a few gigs in November. Of this year, November this year. Yeah, I hope so. And then <laughs> yeah, and then it's like it's to uh, for the release of the EP, the one that he saw, like the EP uh, and the LP, yeah, and the LP and the triple LP you said before that. Right, so I'm not sure how we're gonna deal with that. Whether, <laughs> whether we'll try and we might go to the states on the back of it and do some gigs to, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll we'll see. Yeah, because uh, I know that he's going to be playing with John Head. Yeah, week, yeah. In Liverpool, yeah. so I'm really looking forward to that because I haven't seen him. Well, at least you come to you know, to go, you, you you go to the shop and things, but Andy Diagram, I haven't seen him for a long time. So right. it would be it would be great to sort of, like see him perform, you know, do um with um you know do the gig with John Head. Um, no, I've I've not heard any of that stuff, but. Um, I, I, I was doing a gig in Liverpool. Yeah, on the nineteenth. With some other people that I play with. Um, oh. Um, that's a, a band called Malcolm X, um, oh, which is kind of like heavy jazz type. Yeah. Metal, metal jazz, someone said. <laughs> metal jazz. Wow. Um, <laughs> well, John, yeah. John was there with Andy, and they they was done the spent a weekend playing together all oh, right this this yeah. is about a month ago yeah i, I noticed you've got a michael head uh, yeah <laughs> well i saw my <laughs> i saw me Cadillac yesterday in london you know his first all like insta performance and he's okay. absolutely amazing I mean, oh my god i can't wait for the tour because he's doing a loophole tour the new album right. in may so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. And I'm glad that John Head is doing a gig as well, because what I'm really hoping to do is maybe the two of them together doing a gig. <laughs> Fingers crossed for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, there's also quite a lot of, the, the, I mean, we've talked about bands that you and Andy Diagram are sort of like in together, but um, there are also other bands that you played in without Andy Diagram. <laughs> So you know you're not always together. But, no, no. Um, there's there's one called Bleach Boys, and I think this was like really early on, wasn't it? It was like, um, like late seventies, early eighties. No, it was more 
nineties. You're you're probably oh, you've, you've probably got the wrong bleach boys there. I think there's um there's a kind of a punk bleach boys out there. Oh, uh, I see. It, the the bleach boys you're referring to there is uh, it was kind of bored out of me and a friend doing a remix of some space ed stuff and we ended up doing like yeah actually we remixed about three or four space heads things um and then we started doing some of our own but um actually none of that has been released other than on space heads albums oh right yeah it could be so this must be so like a, a different a different band altogether. yeah yeah We're, yeah <laughs> Been for a while before finding out that there's another band called Bleach Boys. So. Another band called Bleach Boys. And what we about have to spell, it, spell it differently? Yeah. What about Heads Off No Strangers? That's another one that's sort of like connected to your name. Heads Off No Strangers. Yeah. Uh, Is that one of your the bands that you played? Or maybe not. I've not, I've not played with them yet. No. <laughs> I mean, this is it Zambi in them? <laughs> <laughs> well, we we mentioned we mentioned Toolshed and Home Life before, and these are the ones with so like Grand Massey and and, and Paddy Stair. Yeah, because yeah. you did a gig with them recently at the Talleyrand. I saw photos. Okay, yeah, we, that yeah. was with, that was with Jeff Lee, the oh. uh, the guy from Henry Cow. Yeah, um, yeah, but. Yeah, Toolchev played at the Colton Club in December, quite recently. Yeah, yeah. I, I played. I was playing percussion with that. But yeah, I, I, I missed that one because I normally I like the Talleyrand because it's you know it's close to where I live and then it's okay. a really nice venue. But I must have missed that sort of like gig because I would have you know I would have been there. If I had known that, you know, yeah. like Paddy Steer and the uh, Grand Massey, I mean, they're like, I mean, I know that Grand Massey also goes to King B as well sometimes, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then um, this Stock House in, in Walkman, this is, this is like a group, but it's, it's, it's a funny name because it's like Saw, like Stock Aitken and Waterman kind of. Thing. so what's the story about that one um i think you need to hear the music that will give you the story i think oh okay <laughs> they, they started out as being kind of a sampling very much into a free improvising with samples and yeah found sounds yeah very yeah very free improvised Okay, but it's not like not like so like really pop. It's like you know like the all these stock Ick and Waterman so like um, songs and no not not those ones. As far as you can get from stock uh, Ick and Waterman yeah. as you can get. Really. <laughs> Actually, they did start to become uh, quite sort of poppy at some poppy. point. Uh, they were they were doing remixes for uh, they did remixes for Pulp, um, oh. oh, and there was there was a pop band. Oh no, I can't remember now. Oh, I'll get told off for not remembering <laughs> things there. But as I say, uh, Matt Wand, who uh, he's the main person these days from Stockhausen and Walkman. He, um, we're doing this uh, trio in Sheffield on Friday. On Friday, yeah. Oh, wow. That's that's uh, that's a good that's a good thing. That at least you're still doing so like uh, all these musical things. So so you always gig or um, not much these days because you're maybe busy on the farm or. No, uh, I mean the farm's just three days a week. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um. I mean, I've, as far as gigs go, it's been mainly improvised music that, that I've done. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this is the, the, this is the, 
<laughs> well, well, this is the one that I'm actually quite the curious about because another one that's connected to your Discogs entry is uh, Stereo Lab. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently it says it's got to be a sort of like a different Richard Harrison because it says, it says like, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so like Richard Harrison played bass between 1996 and 1998 in Stereo Lab. So I was all like thinking, I yeah. bet they got the wrong tag. The problem is like, uh, <laughs> but yeah. it's not the right one. <laughs> There's, there's, I think there's more than, and more than two of us. I think there's about three. There was certainly, yeah, yeah. Cert there was a Richard Harrison who played with, um, oh god, the, there was another Richard Harrison played with Nico, um, sort of, quite a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. quite a few years. Nico's been dead for nearly thirty years. Yeah. Well, on Google, there's another Richard Harrison who's a drummer. Yeah. But, uh, an American, I think an American guy. And it was like... <laughs> but on Discogs, it's, it's weird because it's actually tagged as you, as Richard Harrison, a drummer, but it says stereo love and played bass. And it's not like, I bet that's not, <laughs> I bet that's not him. Yeah. <laughs> but you have been doing so, like, some I, mean, I, I have tried to change that and it's not even. <laughs> It's, it's not easy. <laughs> it's beyond my, my uh, clumsy um, <laughs> approach to it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how this god works. Anyway, so maybe you can. Richard Harrison's. <laughs> but um, you you also did some um, solo material as well, and th this is really fascinating because um, you released an album in 2002 called uh drone hill 225 and i was sort of like reading it up there's an article about it and um it says that these are like recordings made of a like a wire fence vibrating which is like vibrating in the wind in this sort of like scottish border so oh, is, is this uh, i mean i did i wish i could i wish i had so sort of, like enough time to sort of, like i should have done really so sort of, like went on youtube and listened to it but i thought i'm just gonna ask you <laughs> so, so what is what, what's the drone hill 225 all about and how did it you know how did you get the idea of sort of like uh so, recording this thing <laughs> um my sister She's married to a Scottish farmer in the borders, and I was I was go, I was there visiting, and I went for a walk up the hill, and yeah. I just sort of started to hear this noise and getting louder and louder as I went up the hill, and I thought, what the hell is that noise? And it was uh, these really high tension fen high tension fencing wire. Um, connected to a um, a hollow steel tube, which was like acting as a sound box for this sound, and I just started recording it um, every time I went up. Any time of year, I remember recording it sort of with snow in deep snow and all sorts, and that, yeah. over the years, and it, it was again. Uh, I played them to Matt Wand, um, and he he was running a label, and he said, "Let's put it out." So uh, yeah, he he put he put that CD out in. Uh, it was about 1999, I thought, when that came out. But we, oh, yeah. I, I carried on recording those wires, and we put another CD out two years ago. Um, yeah, 2020, uh, I think there's another one called Drone Hill Second Survey. That's the um, one, yeah. Three processions, yeah, yeah. And and both of these, both of these albums are actually available on Bandcamp. You've got your own sort of like Bandcamp. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what are these? What what's the fence for? I mean, what why is it? There? <laughs> I'm not sure why the fence is so high tension, but it made a fantastic. Aeolian harp type music sound. Wait, I call I call it music. 
<laughs> so you just saw like recorded every time you're at your sister's so like farm you just went there and recorded it you know yeah. throughout the year and wow i'd have like wow. little clip, clip on um piezo microphones that i would yeah attach to the wires yeah and I, I mean they, they they sort of change they create sort of beats and change and uh, it's, i was uh i thought it sounded great <laughs> <laughs> can you dance to it <laughs> um <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you probably do sort of balletic slow movements if you want. <laughs> well, because I, I know that it's, uh, there's an article that I've read as well that it says that you, you hear music everywhere. I mean, you know, like uh, this wire fence, so like creating this sort of like sound. So, um, and you try to sort of like capture it and, you know, maybe release it as an album there's also like uh, you're into nature and um there's there's an article that i've read and that you said something like uh the the pinnacle of life on the planet there are actually birds oh, bird song. they're not yeah and not yeah. sort of like human beings <laughs> yeah i've, got, I've like, got a great recording of bird song at um there's a place in the yorkshire called malham cove and it's kind of it's a really huge curtain sort of wall of uh, limestone um and about 20 uh, 22 three years ago i did a recording getting the dawn chorus there and it's sort of like it, it acts as like a parabolic reflector bringing all the sound into the sort of middle and i, I I sort of love, I love, love that recording. I'd, I'd love that to come out for people to hear. But oh, I, I, went, really? I went back um, last year to uh, try and get the Dawn Chorus again to see how it would have changed. And it was like, it was quite kind of quite shocking how few birds were there at that time. Oh. Yeah. It's, uh, Oh, so it's not. Uh, what 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 do you think is the reason? It was like uh, yeah, the birds uh, don't want to go there anymore. <laughs> I mean, it, bird numbers are in terrible decline in this country. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can only say climate change will affect them. Um, uh, it affects their food source insects uh, 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 insects will appear at different times now because of the climate changing and war getting warmer oh, right. so, so yeah the mm. uh, birds rely on having a certain food source particularly when they they've got young that need feeding and if the food source isn't there, then they they can't uh, carry on producing. Yeah. So the ones that you've recorded before, you've still got them, and then Not when yet. you went back, yeah, when you, when you went back, so it's like a like a big difference between yeah. sort of like those. Um, oh wow! Yeah, I think that's something that you should really sort of like get out as well because so, now that we've got you know like now that there's band camp I mean, yeah, it's quite yeah. easy for musicians to sort of like get their uh, music out there yeah 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 well another one because uh, you've been in sort of like you've got loads of projects and bands and everything but this uh, other one is um now i had to sort of like uh check the how to pronounce it so it's shepi i that's well done yeah yeah because <laughs> it's like uh the spelling is a bit difficult but it's so so it, it's apparently it's welsh welsh for shapes. welsh shapes yeah so can you can you tell us more about this is it just you is it your solo project or no 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 know? um it's um friend bill hargreaves from liverpool 
he um he kind of organized for the this group to get together yeah there's um a singer called maggie nichols okay um she's been around since the 60s um oh, in pretty much involved in uh, improvised music and um, there was another woman fran for and she was a bass player from nottingham so we did this quartet recording not last year the year before and hopefully we're going to do another recording towards the end of this year and have you taught as a um, or no we've not i would yeah, I'd certainly love to um yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. we're hoping because <laughs> <laughs> you've got so many sort of like projects anyway it seems like how do you find the time to sort of like you know um spend it with another group and then so sort of like do it with another group and then you've got space heads as well so, so like... <laughs> well, then, i've got time because andy's doing sort of james things and yeah, you know, yeah. improvised music you don't need to practice you just need to go there with your with intent <laughs> <laughs> and then you just sort of like feel the music itself and then you just play and... yeah 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 um, well i know that you're you're very tired because you've just been working today but i've still got like just the regular questions that i always ask the drummers right. um on on the show yeah. um well the first one is um the the space heads um website your description there <laughs> so like states that um you developed your own style on um on on the drums and you 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 skip around it says that you skip around the kit uh, <laughs> and, and dynamically moving from funky beats to free flowing flurries but the one the one that i wanted to ask you is do you I, wouldn't, talk? I wouldn't have said that but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's somebody's description of what I'm doing. <laughs> well, the the one that I wanted to know is: Do you twirl sticks? Do, do you do that when you play drums? Yeah, say that again. You know, like you the twirling of the sticks. Do you, when, when you play the drums? Do you actually do the uh, the, uh, the twirling? I, I don't think I've ever done it while I've been here. <laughs> I kind of I will I will do it as an exercise, just for exercise for fingers but I, I wouldn't do it live you wouldn't no yeah. i might i might drop it <laughs> well, well the next question i wanted to ask is what about um do you have any drumming heroes um i can't i kind of um uh, i always when anyone says that, I always think of Robert Wyatt. He was the drummer with Soft Machine. Oh. Um, a Jackie Liebesite from Cam. Um, Ronald Shannon Jackson. He's sort of like a heavy sort of jazz drummer, played with Ornette Coleman. And I kind of, none of them particularly sort of, great technically but sort of real sort of i love the spirit that they played with yeah um but there's, there's endless drummers aren't there <laughs> well any of the uh drummers from manchester that you sort of like uh you know that you think is fantastic <laughs> um i don't know many people like mikey wilson He's a great drummer. Um, Don 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 Johnson. Uh, Don, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Don Johnson. Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's so yeah. good. I mean, they're, they're, they're sort of very drummers. Drummer. I, I kind of uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a lot looser than that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true though that all drummers are friends? That you're yeah. also like. Uh... <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> to, to an extent yeah yeah <laughs> do, 
do you have time to so like go to gigs do you still go to so like uh yeah uh, not your gig obviously but other right. people so. so um two weeks ago i went to five gigs in seven days um well. uh, th th uh, like three of them were like improvised music gigs but w one of them my uh my son was playing with um um i don't know if you know martha tilston she's a yeah. folk singer from cornwall yeah and, yeah and uh my son was playing cello with her oh wow. cello and singing it's like folk music so your son plays the cello is he not interested in playing the drums <laughs> Like you? Luckily not, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I, I have done some improvising with him, but he's, he's a fantastic musician. Um, he's, he does music at Leeds University. Um, yeah, he's piano, cello, taught himself mm -hmm. guitar. But not drums. Um, no, my my other younger son was kind of he was vaguely interested. Um, I, I, I think he wants me to set an electronic one up so he can play around on it. Oh, that would be good. That would be so like a, a brilliant idea, and and then you can teach him at least you know be, having a father as a as a drummer. <laughs> then it is. <laughs> It's, it'll be so like easy and, and another thing that I'm so like uh, interested uh, and I always ask this um do you think being a drummer it's, it's got to be so like in you you know like I know you can sort of like go to a, a teacher and then ask the teacher to sort of like give you some drumming lessons but it's <laughs> got to be so sort of like in you I mean you do a lot of improvisations as well so I think yeah, I, I annoy a lot of people outside <laughs> <laughs> Tapping away. <laughs> um, I mean, I, if, if people say to me, oh, I'd like to learn drums, I think, did you, did you spend early years annoying the hell out of your mum tapping away on the table <laughs> or tapping away on biscuit tins? Because if you didn't do that, you're not a drummer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's good. That's, that's good. Yeah, because I always thought, like, because I tried it myself, and even though I do, I want it to be one, I want it to be a drummer, but I think it's just, I haven't got it. I haven't got it with me. Or maybe I'm just too lazy or, you know. But, yeah. uh, I mean, I think, yeah, stick with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so, sort of, like. Learn to play the knife and fork at the table and yeah 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 um another one i want to ask you is uh have you ever had all these years that you've been playing drums have you ever had any accidents or disasters uh, disasters i call it like um nothing springs to mind at the minute so like uh the the bass drum running away from you oh, so. right. I mean, you've got you've got like a different setup anyways I, I, thought, I, thought, you, I thought you meant serious accidents <laughs> well yeah if there's any serious one like maybe falling over your like the jump pool or something <laughs> um yeah I mean, no I've, if i've got if i if i've had one i don't uh don't recall it you know <laughs> Because you've got like a different um, the setup for your drum kit because it's got um, uh, not just the standard one but you have like loads of like percussion things as well attached to it. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I want the color there. I I don't. I don't, yeah. I think a standard kit is a bit boring. Do you have like a cowbell as well? 
Um, at the minute, I've got three cowbells on the drum kit, but um, yeah, yeah, I like cowbells. I've got I've got a block and bells and yeah, all sorts of like metal things that you can hit in this all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I, and yeah. I like I like putting things on the drums as well to like just get the different colours out. Yeah. Yeah, well, Aiden said that it's very interesting perspective and lots of lots of different influences. That's what Aiden said. So, um, the last question I wanted to ask you is: What about advice? Uh, would you so like say to your son, learn how to play the drums or something? But what, <laughs> what would be your advice to so like aspiring drummers or musicians in general? Um. Yeah, I would just say be, op be open to all music in a way. Be open to all sound. Yeah. Um, it, it, it depends on what you want to do. If you just want to do strict um, timekeeping, then yeah. yeah. Go, listen, I mean, to, listen to those funky drummers and um, yeah, there's. I mean, I'll listen to any drummer. They're, they've all got something to say. Yeah, that that is true. And also, like what you did with the um, with that wire fence, <laughs> like because like I think it's true that there's always music everywhere. You can always like I think you know if you just saw like hear the the radiator sometimes you know has some kind of sort of, like music that you can. <laughs> You can hear. You can get some great, great fridges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, thank you so much. I know you. I know it's been a long day for you, and I'm really glad that you still said yes, uh, even though you know you've got work and everything. Um, but when are you coming back to King B? Oh, now potentially Wednesday. Um, oh yeah and how how was the uh the, the records that you got Probably what i should do is what i should do is take a load of cds to, to king b because uh I've, I've just got piles of cds all over the place <laughs> oh, <is he? laughs> yeah yeah you should yeah you should do I mean, i'm sure i'm sure your collection is actually a really good things so you know like uh this i'm have you got like a lot of I don't know like jazzy things or maybe well not pop or anything? Yeah, I've got all sorts. All I mean, sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. For everything from sort of Stockhausen to yeah, John Cage, James Brown, Frank Zappa. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, if you come during the week, then I won't be there. But if it's a Saturday, then that's good because that's when I work. Okay. <laughs> what you hang out there. Get, I work. You, you work there on Saturday. Yeah, I work on Saturdays. That's the only time that I sort of like uh, oh, go right. to King B. So yeah, um, yeah. Right. So if you come on a Saturday, if I see you, I mean, expect me to sort of like ask for a photograph as as long as it's not raining. <laughs> right. <laughs> well thank you thank you so much richard and uh okay. yeah i'm i'm you know i'm, I'm we really glad. We, we didn't say blue orchids i must remember oh that... you were you were in blue orchids as well yeah yeah oh i didn't know that because discogs didn't tell me that you were oh, in... <laughs> yeah. because they're still going right they're still this yeah, yeah, yeah. So, are you part of the um the current no, lineup? No. This was um in 1989, and oh, then and then sort of 91 to 93, we sort of in between Martin rejoined the fall and and then we started again. Yeah, yeah. we did we did a couple of EPs and stuff. 
oh, I'm sorry that I didn't mention blue orchids. It's just that it wasn't like I, I told you before. I mean, it was all like relying on the on discogs. I mean, yeah. they tagged you as Stereo Labs bass player, but they didn't. They didn't tag you in blue orchids. Right. <laughs> I think that's something that needs to be so like you know corrected on this course. <laughs> and yeah. and also I forgot to ask you because I know that um this location dance are still doing gigs sometimes. Like I saw them I think two years ago. Because Ian Ian Runnaker, so he still does it. But you you and Andy Diagram don't play in this location dance anymore. No, no. I mean the we, it f kind of finished in 86 and then we um we did this one-off tour in um japan in japan. 1999 but kind of uh no the current one it's yeah. you you're not you're not part of it anymore so no no but yeah. It, yeah, it's good they're still playing yeah yeah i mean they do occasionally but not not all the time well not so like regular gigs but sometimes i see it and like i said i mean i went to see them uh, i think two years ago the pear hat as well that's, that's oh, another yeah. sort of like brilliant venue so but yeah. anyways thank you so much i mean i'm glad that you mentioned the uh, blue orchids <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm friends with martin brahma on facebook as well he'd probably he'd probably say you didn't mention any of those <laughs> 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 well thank you and have a good rest are you working tomorrow or is i that... am yeah yeah so you're back on the farm tomorrow yeah wow okay <laughs> all right well uh have a good rest and thank you so much once again and okay. hopefully see you one saturday at king b yeah and ha have a great have an awesome gig on Friday as well. I wish I could go, but you know, I'm going somewhere again. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if it's in a, if it's a Manchester gig, I would definitely so like you know try and be there. So hopefully okay. there will be one soon. Yeah. Um yeah, I'll try and keep you informed on that. Yes, please, yeah, please do. All right. Thank <laughs> you so much, Richard. Right. Take care. And Trans see you again soon. All right. Bye. 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 Oh, thank you all so much for joining us live. I know it's quite late and I feel bad because, you know, he's just been to work and, and everything. And I mean, I could, I could tell that he's really tired. But uh, thank you very, very much, Richard Harrison. And if you're in Sheffield, um, he's going to be playing there on Friday. Uh, I think the best thing is just sort of like look it up online as well. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't know about that one. But I will try and sort of like put it on, I'll look for it and then I'll put it on the Ask the Drummer page as well if there's any link for uh, tickets and things like that. But anyways, uh, it's nearly, yeah, it's four minutes till nine now. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you will be going to bed soon. So uh, thank you so much. And um, hopefully you enjoyed your um, first of April, the Easter Monday holiday. So back to work tomorrow. So um, yeah, next week we're going to be back uh, on Sunday again. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. But yeah, uh, as always, I mean, my mind is just going <laughs> the moment i think it's just the time of the day but yeah as always love music love life love 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 drummers drummers are absolutely amazing so um they're they're the best you know, people in the world so uh yeah take care always and uh hopefully i'll see you again uh next week bye for now bye